Christ and Baptist Temple, stand with us. Let's sing together as we begin our service. Come and dine. that you're here tonight and you're out in the cold and ready to uh, just spend some time together with believers and I'm excited to hear from the Bible today. I hope you are as well. Uh, but we want to ask the Lord to just uh, be with us today and bless our time together and uh, so we want to start our service tonight with a word of prayer. We pray for us, Josh. Thank you so much. You can be seated, and we say welcome to you again. We're glad that you're here. We're looking forward to fi finishing our Sunday here in church and excited to hear a message from uh, our pastor tonight. Uh, we just want to remind you about some of the things that are going on in our church. Don't forget, 
about our King's Court program. We weren't able to have our games on Saturday and uh, yesterday, and, but we are planning on and looking forward to uh, doing that this coming Saturday. So, uh, But continue to pray for the families that we have uh, each week. We want to just be able to share truth with them as they're in and they're here and we spend time together. And so uh, don't forget to be praying for them. And uh, we do plan on having uh, regular uh, activities on Wednesday. And, uh, of course, there's uh, the threat of weather coming in now uh, overnight and tomorrow and those kind of things. And so uh, this is a good time to be reminded uh, to keep your information updated with the church. This uh, weekend we sent out a couple of church tasks, uh, so text messages or phone calls. And if you didn't get those... Uh, this would be a great time for you to let us know. Maybe your phone number has changed, or maybe you've not uh, ever uh, given us that information, and we can get you added to those lists so that you can have the pertinent updates, such as uh, last night when we, uh, or yesterday when we uh, decided to not have our Building with the Bible Hour and Sunday School Hour. You'll get those updates if you have the church cast, uh, uh, if you have given us your information for church cast, or uh, through the church app. The new church app uh, was had an up had an had a message that was sent out uh, yesterday as well that would have let you know about the schedule changes. And so we want to encourage you to use these tools. They'll help you stay connected uh, uh, with the things that are happening in our church and things like this weekend where we've had to make schedule changes. You'll get that information quickly and, and have it uh, uh, when you need it. And so uh, don't forget to download the church app. Give us updated information if you need to so that we can uh, keep you well informed when things are happening around our church. Uh, we want to remind you as well that you can give your offerings and your missions offering uh, before or after the service in the offering plates, or you can give uh, at our website or on that new app. And so uh, don't forget about those things. We're thankful uh, that we can give and, and just honor the Lord. And uh, we're thankful we have these different avenues. We can do that and uh, just uh, continue uh, being faithful in those areas. So we're thankful for But we're excited about tonight finishing the day and then getting home and getting bundled up and prepared for all the weather that's coming in, but uh, we're glad that you're here today. Let's sing another song together, and you can sit in your seat, but you've got a promise to sing it out loud and, and sing to the Lord tonight as we sing Redeemed. comes to preach for us. We do have a special song, and the more children are going to come and sing a song for us today. So uh, you three come right along up here and uh, sing well for us.
Thank you for the great singing. That was a blessing. Always a joy to have some special singing, especially like that. That was a blessing. And I know that uh, I'm sure Mom and Dad are working on one with them, so <laughs> my whole family just uh, share a song with us one of these days. And uh, But that was good. Good job. We appreciated that. We're glad to see you tonight. Thank you for coming out and being here. And it's been a really good day. We uh, didn't know what to expect this morning, and we wound up having just a great group of folks out, folks uh, here, and uh, just good to see people. And so uh, we're thankful to be able to come out and be here again this evening. And uh, we know we're uh, under this weather watch, and so I know people are digging in tonight and getting ready for it, but we're glad that you came out and are with us here today. And I'm thankful, uh, thankful for the Lord uh, speaking to my heart this morning. I'm so thankful for God's word, aren't you? And I don't ever want to get to a point in my life where God doesn't speak to me. I want to be able to hear from him. I want to hear from his word. And I'm thankful that when we hear God's word taught and preached and the leadership of the Holy Spirit, he speaks to our hearts. And so I'm thankful for that today. It's a good message. Brother Chuck let Angie know he made it home just a little after five today. So he's... He's home and safe, and so we're thankful for that. It's good to have him with us, and we're glad you're here today as well. I want you to pray for Miss Sue uh, K. Howe. Uh, Aaron uh, sent us a message this morning, just a little before 10, and said they're getting ready to leave the house and head this way to church. And, and uh, when Miss Sue went outside this morning, she slipped on the ice and fell. And uh, she really hurt her arm and elbow and her and hit her face. She she looks like somebody. She sent us a picture. She's got the blackest, darkest eye, and her face is swollen. And uh, she did go to the hospital and have some checks done and some testing and some things done. But uh, she's in but rough shape. She's gonna be sore all over for a while. So uh, so pray for her and remember her. We wondered where they were today, and uh, but uh, remember her and pray for. Her. And uh, then we uh, want you to not forget about uh, our shut-ins and our widows. Uh, and uh, uh, we're thankful we had some folks today. Uh, we had some gifts for them that we were been trying to get to them for several days. And uh, we had a couple that uh, a couple folks that just said uh, to Angie, "We'll take as many of those today as we can, and and uh, drop by and deliver them, and they did. They did a lot of those today, and so that was just a real blessing. I know those folks were probably joyed to get that. Uh, who isn't happy to get a box of chocolate and a flower? And so that's a good thing, and so we're thankful for those people who are willing to do that today, and I know that meant a lot to the people that uh, they were able to visit for just a minute. And then I know it doesn't seem real uh, with all the winter weather we have, but uh, we are looking ahead into the first week of March, and don't forget on that Friday, we're hosting the Marietta Bible College and Dr. Geiler. Lord willing, things just continue to go well. Uh, they'll be with us that evening, 7 o'clock. They're going to come and sing and uh, just uh, pray for Dr. Geiler out of strength, and, and uh, he'll feel like preaching for us that day, and that'll be a great day. So we do want to give them a, a wonderful meal uh, before that service. And uh, they'll be driving down, and we want to feed them good. So go ahead and be thinking about that. And if you can help us with the expense of that meal and you want to make a donation toward that, uh, you can mark any offering envelope. Or if you give uh, through our online giving, you can make a note of it uh, on there where you're allowed to do that. And we'll be sure we put that back and we'll use it for them. And we want to provide a really good meal for them. So uh, that'll be a blessing. And uh, that'll be here, uh, Lord willing, just very soon, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have forgotten all about all this <laughs> by then. So, uh, But we do know that uh, weather's supposed to be moving in tonight, and, uh, and uh, we're just going to ask everybody to be safe and use wisdom. And again, if you uh, ever should run out of heat or power, uh, let us know, and uh, if the power's gone here, we'll turn the lights on for you. And, Turn some heat on around here for you somewhere, and uh, you can get warm. And uh, that'll be something uh, that uh, we want you to know. Uh, but uh, pray for uh, us as uh, you know when these things are forecasted. Uh, we're always, uh, of course, praying for wisdom about our preschool and daycare. These things. Uh, when you make a decision to close that, you affect a lot of families, a lot of lives. And uh, it's hard for them all often to get people to watch their children or whatever the situation is. So we always hate to do it, but sometimes it's just something we have to do. 
And so we're facing that again as we move into the night and look toward the morning of just not really knowing yet what to do. You like to make those decisions as early as you can, but uh, you just you can only do it when you can. So, uh, so pray about those families and, and uh, the wisdom, of, and uh, it'll be an easy decision for us to make. Well, we are glad you're here tonight, thankful for God's word, and I'm thankful uh, God is so gracious that he does speak to us, and uh, he wants us to uh, hear from his heart, and he wants us to take it to heart, and he wants us to learn and grow, and I'm so thankful he's patient, and uh, he's so long-suffering, and uh, he, uh, I'm so thankful he's, uh, he's patient, so we're thankful for God's word. I want you to take your Bible tonight and turn with me to 1 John, the little book of 1 John, and uh, chapter 3, and We'll turn there and begin to read in verse 11, and I just want to uh, look at this passage of Scripture tonight for a little bit and think about uh, continuing, continuing to realize the importance of love, continuing to realize the importance of love. <clears throat> first John chapter 3, uh, we believe first, second, and third John. The book of the Revelation and the Gospel of John were all given by the Holy Spirit to John the Apostle, and uh, we have these books recorded for us, and uh, we want to look at it today. Beginning down in verse 11, 1 John chapter 3, you follow along and let me just read some of this together. It says, for this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. And we'll stop right there, but I want you to just think with me as we look at this passage of Scripture today, Valentine's Day, and let's just remember and, and continue to consider the importance of love in our hearts and lives, the love of God for us and the love of God in and through us uh, as, we, uh, as we move forward into this year. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for meeting with us throughout the day. Thank you for a wonderful service this morning and God for just uh, this opportunity to be here again together tonight. Thank you for these families who are here and uh, Lord, we just ask you to bless them and just God, speak to their hearts, and God, may they just know your presence, and uh, Lord, we're praying you keep them safe, and their family, and loved ones, and uh, Lord, we consider others tonight in our church, that Lord, you'll just, uh, Lord, just uh, care for them, and provide for them, and meet their needs, and uh, Lord, as we uh, move through this year, Lord, we're just uh, thinking, Lord, about your faithfulness to us, and uh, Lord, we want to continue this year, and we want to continue on considering how important, God, love is, your love for us. Uh, Lord, you live in us, and so, Lord, love is in us, your love. And, Lord, it's important that we, uh, Lord, demonstrate that love. And so, 
Lord, speak to our hearts about these things. And uh, Lord, we again thank you for uh, speaking to hearts and uh, speak to us again tonight. Lord, may we just be open to you. Lord, may we always be uh, obedient to you, just quick, Lord, to respond to you. And uh, Lord, we thank you, God, for your grace and <clears throat> Lord, your mercy, your patience. And so, Lord, just minister to hearts tonight, we pray. Uh, build us tonight and uh, strengthen us. And Lord, may we just uh, move closer to you and uh, we're praying, Father, that we might decrease and you might increase. And so we ask all these things this evening in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, we know tonight that we're living, we're living in, a, in a dying world. And uh, we're living among people who are dying. Everywhere you look, you see someone alive physically. But if they do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior we cannot forget that they're dying spiritually. And uh, the greatest joy that we'll ever know in the world is to know that we have passed from death unto life, to pass from death unto life, uh, everlasting life. And there's a joy there for everyone who has passed from death unto life. And there's, there's a joy of knowing that's true for the people that we love in this world, to know that they too have passed from death and the life, uh, the joy of everlasting life. Uh, it's something that the world cannot give us. And not only is there joy in knowing we have everlasting life, but there's a peace that you, you cannot have from any other thing in the world that comes from passing from death unto life. You know, do you know that joy of having passed from death to life? That's, that's a question that everyone needs to consider. Do you know that joy? Do you do you know what it was to pass from death to life? Do you have in your heart uh, a peace there? A peace that's settled, even though everything else around you might be shaking and moving on its foundations in your heart. There's a settled peace that you have life, eternal life, everlasting life. Uh, there's a security there in your heart and life that comes from uh, knowing uh, Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. In our text, we read, as we look through this passage, we read about two families, uh, two different families. The, the family of God, uh, I believe we see them here. In fact, we know that this book is written to born-again believers. So we know that we're, we're seeing the family of God in these, in these scriptures. But I believe also the, that the Holy Spirit was pointing our attention to well, to, as well to those that are not in the family of God. In fact, we find reference to some that were not in the family of God in the passage of Scripture I read to you. In verse number 10, it said, In, in this, the children of God are manifest. There's the, the family of God, the children of God, and the children of the devil. The children of the devil. You don't have to be someone who is an absolute terror uh, to be in that family. There are, there are people that are moral people. There are people who are, are hard workers. There are people who are the best neighbors. There are people uh, in the family of the devil. They are children of the devil who are people that we would never consider that unless we consider the fact that you're either in the family of God by the new birth or you're not. And that we're all born into this world, not in the family of God. And so the only other place we can be is to be a child of the devil, to be in that family. And we find that. Whosoever, it says, doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now that describes the lost, that family that's not of God. They that do not righteousness. Do not righteousness. And righteousness is one of those words that we just want to get a good, simple Bible definition for righteousness simply is that which is right. It's that which is right. We know that in ourselves, we have no righteousness. Uh, we have no righteousness. So to do that which is right, what is right? What is right? Well, I think in this context, what we see that the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about is down in verse 23. This is His commandment that we should believe on the name of of the Son, Jesus Christ. That's what's right. That's what's right for all men. That's what's right for all people to do, is to repent of their sin 
and to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have not done that righteousness or done that which is right, then you're not in the family of God. You're not in the family of God. Je uh, this, th this is what it means. What is right is to repent and receive Jesus Christ, to live for Him, the one who loved us and gave Himself for us. If we've not done that, then we're not in the family of God. Verse number 11 describes those that are in the family of God. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That we should love one another. 1 John, the little book of 1 John, is all about knowing that you're in the family of God. What will be your characteristics as a member of God's family? Uh, what will be some of your family traits? We all have those things. Sometimes we see it in ourselves, don't we? We think if we see something we do or some mannerism or some way we respond to certain things and it makes us think about one of our family members. And sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be not so good. But we have family traits and characteristics. And uh, what is it are some of those things? What are some of the likenesses to our Heavenly Father? Well, I think one of the most powerful ones will be seen in the love that's in the heart of those that are in God's family. And that's what I want you to think about. Notice number one here tonight, love is a proof. Love is a proof. This little book is all about knowing you're in God's family. In fact, it says in 1 John 5, 13, that you might know that you have eternal life, that you know it. And how is it that we can know it? Is there evidence in our lives that will be there if we've been born again? Uh, can there be tangible things, things that can be seen and things that are known that are the result of putting your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ? And I think 1 John answers that, yes. Yes, there are some things that can be seen. They're, they're tangible in the fact that we can recognize and see them and they can be known to be in our hearts and lives as a result of being born again, passing from death unto life. Now, notice again in verse 11, it said, For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. It's talking about uh, Cain here, his brother Abel. You know, we read about the first sin in Genesis, in the first family, Adam and Eve. And we find out what happened there and we know about their sin, but we know about God's grace and His provision for them and how He forgave them and how He covered their sin and gave them a new start. And they became a family and He blessed them with children. And you know, the very first children we read about in the Bible, we find sin again is present, isn't it? In fact, it's to the degree of murder as Cain slew his brother Abel. And the Bible answers the question, well, why? why? Why did he do that? Wherefore slew he him? And the Bible said, because his own works, Cain's works, were evil and his brothers were righteous. Uh, God taught Adam and Eve what it meant to have their sin forgiven. He taught them a lesson about the cost, how an innocent life had to give itself for the guilty and how Blood had to be shed to cover their sin and how, uh, how it was necessary for that to be done God's way. And I can't not believe that Adam and Eve taught both their boys the way to be right with God. And one of them chose that right way. And when it came time to make their sacrifice and make their offering, Abel brought of the flock. He bought of the best he had and presented that unto God. But not Cain. Cain was the was the Cain was the, uh, was the architect of the world's first false religion. He created a religion based on your works and not on receiving salvation and forgiveness uh, by faith in God's way. And this is what Cain did. And because Abel did that which was right, it brought condemnation into Cain's heart. He hated his brother for it and he killed him. And the Bible says in verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. The Bible tells us proof of having passed from death unto life in Christ is the presence of love for other people in your family. 
In Colossians chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. I, I have those words from and into circled in my Bibles in those verses. He's, he's, he's translated us. He delivered us from the power of darkness out of the family uh, of the devil and into the kingdom of His dear Son, into the family of God in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. When we're born again into the family of God, God brings us out of the family of darkness and, and He puts us into the family of His dear Son. We were lost in our sins, but now we're saved. Now we have eternal life. Eternal life is the Son, Jesus Christ. He is eternal life. And we, we don't ever want to forget that Bible concept that salvation and eternal life is not in a series of, of keeping uh, certain uh, principles or uh, of being sure that I check marked off these uh, mental acknowledgments, but uh, real everlasting eternal life is a person. It's Jesus Christ. And John, 1 John helps us to understand that, that if we're going to have eternal life, everlasting life, then we have Jesus Christ. And without Him, we don't have anything. We might have religion, and we might have a real determination uh, to do well, and we might have some real genuine sincerity, but without Christ, we don't have e everlasting life. We've not passed from death unto life. Jesus Christ's salvation, He's salvation. To have Him is to have eternal life. And the life of the eternal one then comes into our lives. If we have Jesus Christ, we have all of Him available to us. Not just the saving part, but every other part of Him as well. The life of the eternal one in our life. We can speak of our salvation by speaking about a time and a place. I can tell you about the day I was saved. I can tell you where I was. I can tell you where it happened, you know, and I can tell you I was sitting uh, about where Haley was in a church, and I can remember slipping out of my seat and coming forward, and I was saved probably, no doubt, before I even got to the front because it was faith in the finished work of Christ that got me out of my seat and moved me forward. That's obedience, isn't it? Faith is obedience, and I was responding to uh, to that Bible truth that what was right for my life was to repent of my sin that sent Jesus Christ to the cross and to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. And that's what I was doing. I can take you to a time. I can take you back to a place. And sometimes when we talk about our salvation, that's what people will say. And that's something we ought to be able to say. If you can't say that tonight about yourself, then you need to go back and think that through. You need to examine yourselves, the Bible says, uh, of whether or not you're in the faith. And, and that's something we ought to have, a time and a place. But when we speak about salvation, we ought to be able to speak about uh, knowing uh, what, uh, what we are and, and what we have found Jesus Christ to bring into our lives. Because when He came into our heart, he brought things that were not there before. He brought things that we were incapable of before. And when we begin to look at this proof of being in the family of God, being born again, we find His love is proof. Love is proof. And it would be impossible for that to be true in our life if it weren't for the presence of Jesus Christ. We find an example of this dying lost family again in verse number 12 there. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother. Wherefore slew him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. But love, love means Christ-like love, that we want what is best for others, regardless of who they are. That's the love of the Lord. God's love in our lives, when it's present, it will cause us to want what's best for other people, regardless of who they are. And we don't see that in Cain's life. Cain wanted what Cain wanted. He didn't want what was best for Abel. And that love of the Lord present, the Lord present in our life, will enable us to love with a love that wants what's best for everyone, 
uh, regardless of who they are. Love isn't an emotion. It's not in words. We find that, uh, that that's what uh, he says in this passage of Scripture about our words, about our deeds, where he tells us to love not, love not just in word or in deed uh, or, or, in, uh, or in our words. Uh, but we're to, we're to love with something more than that. We're, uh, we're to do it, he says in verse 18, let us not love in word, neither in, in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And so uh, we find that we, shouldn't, uh, we, should, uh, we should see more than words or emotions in our heart and life as a born-again believer. In love, we're going to do what's best for others. And the Bible helps us to understand that we shouldn't truly be surprised at the violence and injustice that we see in the world. Uh, sometimes I think it, 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 we let that surprise us. The hatred that's present in the world, we see that. But it shouldn't really surprise us. He says in verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, that the world hate you. Don't be surprised when it turns its hatred toward you. When it responds to you as a child of God in hatred, the world hates. It's present in its heart and life. It will hate those things that are not in its family. Where there is nothing but hatred and envy and jealousy in a heart, there is not the presence of eternal life. There is not the presence of Jesus Christ. And that love for others that wants what's best for them, regardless of who they are, that's proof that Christ lives in us. It's proof that the Lord lives in us. Uh, notice the second thing, the Lord is our pattern. He says in verse 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for us, the brethren. The word perceive here means to see, it means to understand, it means to comprehend, it means to have an example set before us, and we see it, and we, and we understand it, and we follow after it. Jesus Christ is the example of true love. He is love Himself. He's the good shepherd who gave His life for the sheep. We would not know love or know Him if He did not first love us. If He did not want what was best for us, in spite of who and what we are, then we would still be lost and without hope today. You remember in Romans chapter 5, he says, beginning in verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I think, I think as you read through that, we sometimes miss that port above, above verse uh, 6 and 7 and 8 where it talks about now that we're born again and now that we have Christ in our life, uh, now that love that God had for us has been shed abroad into our own hearts. The Bible uses that word there. It says into us, into. God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, the presence of the Lord in our life. It's been given unto us that capability and that capacity to love others as Jesus Christ loved us. And when we let the flesh or our own nature begin to put up the argument, well, that's just impossible. There are just some things that I can't get over and people I can't love and, and this and that. Then, then the Bible goes back to remind us, well, remember, God loved you while you were sinners. And that same God now is in you, and that same love of God is in you because He is in you. And where He was willing to die so that that love that He had for us could impact our lives, that's the same thing Brother Chuck preached about tonight, or this morning, then we just need to die and let that love of the Lord live in our lives, live in our lives for others. 
And so uh, we find the Lord is our pattern. Verse number five said, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The Lord acts. Uh, he shows us how love acts. He shows us how love acts, that it's sacrificial, that it's willing to give all that it has and hold nothing back. And it shows us here what love wants for others. Jesus Christ wanted us who were sinners to be saved. He wanted us who deserved hell to escape hell and have heaven. He wanted all of those things for us. That's what love wants for others. It wants what's best for them. It wants to do for others. It wants to better others. It wants others to have what is best. It's willing to give all for others. In 1 John 3 and verse 17, the Bible said, But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? I think we often look at that verse and we think it of just material things. But I hope you'll notice that word good and remind yourself what the word gospel means. The word gospel means what? The good news, doesn't it? We that know Jesus Christ have what's good. We have the only thing good in this world. And if we hold that back, if we're not willing to give that, even to those uh, who, uh, you know, we, uh, we maybe, uh, we maybe ha have to fight in the flesh uh, that thought of wanting what's best for them, uh, then we should share that with them. We've got to be willing to give that with them. We, we must take what we have and love others with it, beginning with the gospel. Beginning with the gospel. Verse 18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So when we think about love, we need to continue to remember the importance of it. Its presence in our life is proof of the Lord's presence in our life. And though we might realize that's not our nature, and, and where it is the nature of God to love, you may not agree, but I believe the Bible said our nature apart from Christ is to hate. But with that presence of Christ, now there is that presence of that love. And when we will step aside and let Him have control of our life, there is the capability to love others and want what's best for them, uh, no matter who they are, and to try to share with them that love, beginning with the gospel. So uh, we find then the Lord Jesus is our pattern. But notice one last thing. Love is the way to peace. Verse 19 said, And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Now, there is a reward in loving others as the Lord has loved you. There's a reward in that. There's the reward of a peace. There's a reward of joy that comes from knowing that you did what was right. That you did what was right. There's the reward of knowing that the Lord has put that desire in you to do what's good and right for others because He is in you. There's that assurance that comes when we realize what the Lord is doing in us and that He wants to do through us that we know that is not of us. It's not of us for that to be true. We have that joy then, that peace, that reward of knowing the Lord's presence in our heart and life. There's a, there's a way that a member of God's family should live their life. Verse 22 said, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. You know, as a member of God's family, there's some things that ought to be true about the way I live my life. To be in this family, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing things to get in the family of God or to stay in it. But now that I am in it, and now that the Lord lives in me, there ought to be some things that ought to be true about the way I live my life. I believe that God's family, God's people ought to be praying people, lifting up one another in prayer before the Lord. And there's so many things with, that we need to pray about. Praying about God's Word. Praying about its work in our life, the work of God in the lives of others by His Word. Praying that, uh, that, uh, that God will touch and impact the lives of other people through our lives, just like we heard this morning. It's not always 
uh, it's not always going to be through that, uh, that gospel track. It's not always, always going to be in that uh, specific time when you're witnessing to someone, but it's going to be accumulative through the lo- life that you live and the love of Christ that can be seen in you day and day. When someone comes up against someone else who, who treats them better than they deserve to be treated or they treat you, then they're coming up against something that they're not going to come up against in the world. They're coming into contact with something that is the life of Christ in them. And so, uh, so we ought to pray and, and we ought to pray for others and let the love of the Lord be seen in our life. We ought to be obedient people. God's family, we ought to be obedient in our family. He says in verse 22, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him. That's praying. Asking and receiving. What to be people asking and receiving. And because we keep His commandments, we ought to be obedient family members. Obedient family members. And then loving others. Doing that which is pleasing in His sight. Verse 23, And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Lord, of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. He gave us commandment that we love others. As He's loved us. Because God loves us, He commands us to do, what's, uh, to, to do the same uh, because He knows that's what's best for us. He knows it's best for us to be obedient to Him. It's always going to be best to be obedient to the Lord. And if we will, if we will, he find, we find what He has in His heart to do for us. He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him and hereby we know that He abideth in us. Isn't that, isn't that what, 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 we, what we think about day by day? Isn't it, isn't it true that all of us from time to time, we let the world and the flesh and the devil put those doubts and those question marks in our life, and you know we wonder, how could I, and you know why didn't I? And is it possible that I could even know the Lord? Isn't it, isn't it true we all struggle with those things from time to time? But look at, look at the reward of being a praying, obedient, loving person. Letting the Lord be those things in our lives. Because it says, hereby we know that He abideth in us. We know. We have assurance. We have an assurance We have an assurance in our heart. We have that peace and joy and assurance that we're in God's family, that we pass from death unto life because there's that love in our heart that that we experienced in the Lord and that He will enable us to share with others, no matter who they are or what they deserve, that we can want what's best for them. We can want what's best for them. And uh, so, so we think about the love of God. Uh, we've got to continue to put an importance on that. Uh, continue to put an importance in love. And uh, to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. And to, to let His love for others uh, to be seen in our hearts and in our life. Because it's a difference maker. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, Paul wrote the letter of the Spirit to the church in Corinth. And he said, against love, against such... There is no law. In other words, there isn't anything in the world that can stop the impact of the love of God in a heart and in a life. It never faileth. Charity never faileth. And uh, we can try a lot of things. We can do a lot of things. Uh, We can try this good deed or that, but it's going to be letting the Lord love others through our life. It's going to make the difference in them. So, so the importance, the importance of love continue uh, to put an importance in that in your life. Because when you allow the Lord to do that through you, you, you wind up being blessed by that because you're going to have that assurance. You're going to have that peace and you're going to have that joy that comes from just simply doing what, what is right. Just doing what you know is right. Not doing it, not doing it to uh, to try to stay right or be right. You're just doing it for the sake of it being the right thing, because that's that's how the Lord is. That's who He is in your heart and in your life. So the importance of love. Uh, however, the Lord's spoken to you today. Just be obedient to Him. 
And uh, let's just grow together in the Lord. And let's take his word as we, as we receive it, just little bit by little bit, a, a meal at a time through the preaching and teaching of God's word. And let's just take it and take it into our heart and let it just have a part of our heart and life and help us to grow and be a little bit more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, so uh, let's think about the importance of continuing in love. Let's pray together. In a moment, we'll stand and we'll just give everyone an opportunity just to say yes to the Lord. Maybe you're here this evening and God's been speaking to your heart. He's been working in your life about something. I don't know what it might be, but one of the places that I know that always helps me is just to go back to the point of where and how much Jesus Christ loved me, what he did for me, what he gave for me, how he gave all for me. And if he did that for me, then whatever it is he's asking of me, it's not a price too high to pay. Uh, and, and we can just surrender to the Lord, whatever it is that he's working in our heart and life, however he wants us to grow. And in that matter, we heard about this morning of just denying self and taking up our cross. And, and when we die to self, we'll, then we allow the Lord to live through us his way. And uh, his way is always the best way. It'll make the difference in lives and the, in hearts. So let's pray together and uh, you just be obedient to the Lord tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you again. We've been able to be together in church and open our Bibles. And God, thank you for the word of God, the living word that speaks to all of our hearts and lives. And God, uh, by your word tonight, Lord, may we take some, some truth, some bit or portion, even just of a verse or a word, and let it, God, do its work in our heart. To God, just remind us of who we are as your people, members of your family, how we got there. And Lord, that you live in us. And God, in our lives, Lord, uh, is, uh, is present everything you are. And uh, Lord, you want to let that, uh, Lord, uh, be experienced by others all around us. And so, Lord, help us, Lord, just to uh, let your love that you had demonstrated for us be seen in our lives as well for others. And uh, love, Lord, is a powerful, powerful thing. And uh, it can do things, God, nothing else can do in this world in the lives of families and friends. So help us not to forget that. Help us to continue to remember how important it is uh, for your love to be seen in our lives. And for us, Lord, to know uh, the peace and to be blessed, God, uh, by doing it. And so, Lord, minister to your people. Help us just to be obedient to you, to always be stepping forward and close to you and moving toward you and your will for our lives. And uh, so make us like the Lord Jesus more and more. And uh, we'll thank you for what you're doing. And we ask again now, your blessing, uh, that we be obedient to you. Someone may be in church tonight, I don't know, even here, that's never received you as their personal Savior. Maybe they've done a lot of things, but God, they don't have you in their life. They look back at salvation as, Lord, just something, God, that uh, was an external uh, experience, something maybe they did, they felt like was something that was expected of them. But Lord, they never truly in their life opened up their heart and invited you to come in and just be there and take control. And so, Lord, we're just looking tonight to you to have your way in every heart and life. Well, thank you for what you're doing, and we ask it in Jesus' name we pray, and amen.